All right, so uh, welcome to our, our round table. We call it round table, <laughs> even with these rectangles that we see. Um, um, with, with, first with our, with our directors, no? uh, both uh, June, Lana, and Dennis Atienza were nominated by the Society of Filipino, Filipino Film Reviewers for Best Director. Um, and their films are also nominated for Best Film um, in our second Pinoy Review Awards. Um, and what we plan to do for this particular uh, segment is really to talk to June and Dennis about the making of their films, uh, Big Night for June Lana and Last Days at Sea for Venice Atienza. Um, both were uh, released last year, um, Big Night in the Metro Manila Film Festival, where it was the big winner, uh, uh, Best Film and several other awards. Um, Venice's film, um, I know it premiered outside, Tama Venice. It premiered uh, outside in, the Philippines. So Berlinal. Berlinal. Yeah. Um, and then, medyo nakalimutan ko na, sorry Venice, uh, yung research ko, how, where did it premiere in the Philippines? Sa Cinemalaya. Cinemalaya there. Yeah. Okay, so that's why, yeah, that's why uh, we considered it now for, for uh, the awards. Um, we'll start with, with, um, your origins. Na siguro simula natin before we, we tackle those, those films. Tatanungin ko kayo, um, kailan, kailan nagsimula yung pagiging malikhain ninyo? Kasi alam ko, for example, si June started writing very early no? and, and, and uh, joined uh, writing competitions. Paano, ano yung itsura ng, ng pamilya mo noon, June? An, paano kayo nakahubog sa pagiging malikhain? Interesting question. Um, hindi ko alam. <laughs> Kasi ako lang yan, ako pa lang yung uh, major artistic mm. na nanggaling sa, nanggaling doon sa pamilya ko. Um, I see. Um, karamihan, engineers, doctors, priests, <laughs> kaya siguro may issue ako lagi sa religion <laughs> parang ang dami lang mga pare sa paligid ko yeah. um, but early on I think it was really quite clear to me eh, the moment I started reading books, novels na I wanted to be a storyteller hindi ko lang alam kung ano pa yung medium nun and then later on it was the stage eh, cause sa stage talaga ako nagsimula uh, and ano, basta, ang, ang aga kong nagsusulat, uh, I, I didn't know anybody uh, sa chatter. Um, mm -hmm. So what I did was uh, I read a lot of plays and then kinokopya ko lang yung format. Uh, and it was really quite late na nung nakilala ko. I was already in college when I met Rene Villanueva who eventually became my mentor. Mm -hmm. Siya yung nagturo ng lahat ng, alam ko ngayon sa, sa pagsusulat, pero ang training ko talaga... Uh, chatter. So, nung, nung bata ka, sariling, sarili mong ano, interest, walang, walang nagsabi na parent na, sige, patuloy mo yan, ito pa yung maraming libro, walang ganun. Wala. I think, uh, low to be candid about it, I came from a really emotionally charged family. Mm. So, I think because of that environment, uh, writing, for some reason, became like a safe place for me. Yeah. And, you know, it forced me to go there because otherwise I didn't like what was around me. Yeah. So I, I was forced to go in and, you know, that led me to, to where I am now, I guess. So, yun, I think masyadong maraming angst and trauma. <laughs> Kaya napilitang, you know, kailangan ko ng, ng venue eh. So I right. think yung pagsasulat dun ko yun na ilabas. I see, I see. Uh, ikaw naman, Venice, um, did you know early on na magdi-direct ka na? Magdi-direct ka? Kasi pumasok ka sa UP Film, mm -hmm. So, by that time, alam mo na, na doon papunta. But how old were you when you when you started honing your creative uh, skills? Um, ang naalala ko kasi talaga, nung bata pa kami, kami ng mga pinsan ko, um, meron yung lola ko, meron siyang radyo na parang pwede kang mag-record. So, ang ginagawa namin, gumagawa kami ng mga radio drama. Tapos, ginagawa namin sila marimar, gano'n. Tapos, gumagawa kami ng sarili naming mga 
um, mga sound effects, tapos nag-iimbento kami ng mga sarili naming mga stories. Tapos minsan parang gumagawa kami ng mga kunyaring news report, gano'n. So, feeling ko, mga ano siguro ako ng mga four, five. Pero parang laro lang talaga siya. Parang na-enjoy talaga namin siya kasi yung lolo ko mahilig siyang manu- makinig, makinig ng radyo. Mm. So, parang lagi talaga kami nakikinig ng radyo. Mm. And parang siguro naisip ko lang mag-film. Kasi nung pumasok ako sa UP, HRIM yung course ko. Oh. Kasi pangarap kong maging chef. <laughs> pangarap kong maging pastry chef dati. Tapos, um, pero nung nasa UP na ako, um, nagkaroon ako ng maraming friends sa CMC, sa Mascom. Sa UP Mascom. Tapos, um, tinanong ko yung, naalang ko talaga, tinanong ko yung mommy ko dati. Sabi ko, ma, ano bang trabaho yung parang ano? Yung, <laughs> um, yung, you can make people feel things. Naalala ko talaga, yun yung term na sinabi ko. Tapos sabi namin ko, um, siguro pag gumawa ka ng pelikula, baka, baka ganun, baka yun yung trabaho na parang pwede kang magparamdam ng mga kung ano na sa mga tao. Tapos parang ako, oh, okay. <laughs> so nag-apply ako sa, ano, sa UP Film. Pero hindi ako natanggap ka agad. Mm-hmm. Nung first try ko, na-reject ako. Tapos sabi ko, hala, ano nang gagawin ko? Pero nag-try ako ulit. Tapos yun. I think yun na. Pero even after I graduated, hindi ko rin talaga naisip um, na, na magiging fiction filmmaker ako. Parang mm-hmm. hindi ko siya, um, parang hindi, hindi parang hindi, I didn't dare, I would right. say. Parang, ayaw ko, parang wala akong strength sa writing. But mm-hmm. what I loved really was listening to people. Yung mga chikahan, mm-hmm. yung... Um, yung, ewan ko, parang gusto ko lang malaman kung kamusta sila, kung saan sila nang galing. And I think, mm. also may kinalaman yun sa lola ko kasi dati pag laging brown out sa amin. Mm. Um, nagkikwento siya tungkol sa kung saan sila nang galing, sa probinsya nila, na maraming bagyo. Wala kasing pictures yung mommy ko ng mga childhood photos. Wala siyang ganun kasi galing siya sa probinsya. Tapos naiwan na nila lahat doon. So parang, dun yung nag-start feeling ko. Like, When, since when I was a child. Tapos, yun na. I mean, I think, big, I, ano ba yun, parang romakit lang ako dito, ganun, nag-assist mm. ako. And then, I kind of really found, like, a way to connect to people through making documentary films. Right. Yeah. yeah. And That's that nice. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting, no, yung, yung, um, yung differences, no, yung, although may pagkakapareho in terms, yun nga, yung, yung honing the, creativity pero parang yung kinalabasan kay Venice is a uh, uh, documentary agad na naisip niya na documentary sa sa you June um uh, nung nagteteatro ka um nasa isip mo ba na uh, after this gusto ko talagang gumawa ng pelikula or nasa isip mo na gusto kong dito na lang ako habang buhay sa teatro I wanted to stay. Sa so, liga sa totoo, sa totoo lang. Gusto ko talaga nga sa teatro lang ako. Uh, parang gusto, hanggang hanggang sakin sa hanggang sakin na ako pinaglaban ko. <laughs> Pero talagang gutom na gutom ako. <laughs> I was with Peta for for so many years and resident playwright ako ng ng Peta and mm-hmm. sobra akong I mean it was the most I think satisfying, one of the most satisfying chapters siguro in my life, yung mm. uh, pagiging part ng PETA, yung the way we create stories. It's a, yeah. it's a community, eh, hindi lang ikaw. Eh. And then mm-hmm. you get to go to other communities to listen to other people's stories. And then, you know, yun yung nagiging inspiration ninyo para gumawa ng mga, mga plays. Although, nung gumagawa ako ng play sa PETA, si Rod Rivera, na naging isa sa mga director ko, <laughs> sinasabi niya sa akin, ang iiksi ng mga eksena mo, magpilikula ka na lang kaya, naiinis siya sa akin. <laughs> uh, pero ayoko talaga umalis ng chatro. So, totoo lang. Uh, kung my way, I mean, siguro, kung enough lang, eh, hindi nga yung, mm. kahit, yung kumita eh, kung enough lang, yung uh, nakukuha ko sa chatro to support my family. Kasi, you know, ako yung breadwinner eh. I would have stayed. Kasi mm-hmm. ang hirap, ang hirap talaga eh. Uh, yeah. Kailangan mo maging adult, you have to find ways. And so mm-hmm. nag-advertising ako for for a time. Mm-hmm. And then from there, sumasali sa palangka. Yeah. Kasi wala akong kakilala talaga sa industry. 
And mm. iba yung iba yung generation ko, hindi kagaya ng generation ngayon. May, you have Cinemalaya, you have all these mm. local film festivals. You all you all have just grants na magbibigay sa ng opportunity to become uh, a filmmaker. Nung panahon mm. ko wala, as in wala talaga. Kung gusto mong makapasok, kailangan may kakilala ka or mag-workshop ka sa sa Mobile Fund, which medyo expensive 'yon para sa akin yung time niya. So hindi mm. ako makapag-workshop sa sa mobile, wala talaga. So, sali lang ako ng sali sa palangka. As ang chain ko noon, sa'yo ko sana madiscover ako ni Mother Lily. <laughs> <laughs> ang pag nanalo ako madiscover, kasi siya yung malaking, pinakamalaking producer noon eh. So, uh, so nagkaroon bigla ng, ng ano, screenplay category sa palangka. Mm, uh, uh-huh. And then, sali ako doon. Dalawang beses ay yata ako nanalong first place. Yung una kong dating sa'yo, ito na, ito na. Madi-discover na ako. <laughs> <laughs> hindi pala wala pala walang lumapit I mean no, bakit ako na na first place wala nangyari sa akin so wala talaga I was really hoping madidiscover ako kasi wala akong way in it I think it was on my third third win or was it second hindi ko na maalala and Marilu Diaz Abaya was the chairman and the uh, one of the jury nun mm-hmm. and yung, yung yung screenplay ko yung yung pinapangarap mo, yung manifesting na yun, nangyari, mm. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable, ito yung pinapangarap ko, dadating ako, and then there's this director, oh, you're the only reason why I went here, wow. <laughs> and then binigyan niya sa akin yung calling card niya, and then, you know, she wanted to talk after the, the awards. And that's it, that started my career uh, because of, ano, na, na-manifest ko naman sa palang kayo. That was sa puso ng dagat, right? Yeah, sa puso ng dagat. Yeah, right. Um, So prior, that was your first film. Yes, that, that, that was yeah. my first film. Yes, yes. Yeah. How was the experience? So, nung uh, kasi, sure, teatro, um, yung yung proseso, uh, iba sa pelikula. Kung mm-hmm. yung process no nung nung ginawa ng pelikula yung material mo, were you involved uh, in the in the shooting and the actual production of the film or? Hindi yeah, na? yeah. I mean, with 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 a director like uh, you know. direct direct Marilu. Yung process niya kasi talaga ini-involve yung lot especially yung 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 mga writers niya, me, Ricky Lee, Peter Angulin, mm. eventually nung naging co-writers ko sila for Jose Rizal. I worked siguro how many movies was that I worked on four films with direct Marilu. Four years yun sa mundo sunod and it, yeah. I felt like I went to I went to film school. Mm. <laughs> Those four years that I that I worked with her. Um Not, naging natural sa akin yung, I don't know, at parang tama yata si Rodi pero magpelikula ka na lang yung sinabi niya sa akin. Kasi parang ang na, naging natural sa akin yung proseso nun. Uh, ang naging problema lang nun, well, mamaya na siguro, pero ang problema lang nun kasi nagsunod-sunod yung mga pelikula kong dinirect ni Direct Marilu. Mm-hmm. And they were, you know, medyo passion projects niya. So ito yung mga artsy, dating sa ano, wala akong trabaho after that for ah, a really yeah. long time. Wala akong trabaho. Because people thought, yan lang yung kaya yung isulat ko sa Rizal. Masyadong mataas, <laughs> hindi yung ano. So, yun. Yeah, really interesting. Um, sige. Si, si Venice, um, so after film schools, sabi mo nga, um, parang wala ka talagang, hindi mo inisip na mag-fiction film, gaw- gumawa ng fiction film. Um, you studied abroad. Right. Um, mm. What led to that? Ah, uh, <laughs> kasi after so after graduation sa UP, para akala ko talaga, wow, gagawa na ako ng pelikula. I mean, pinangarap ko pero alam ko na parang parang kapos. Gets ko naman yon. <laughs> so parang sabi ko, um, pero mahilig kasi talaga ako mag mag organize or mahilig ako sa mga Excel sheet ganyan. So sabi ko, if kipu hindi ako magdederek o hindi rin ako magsusulat. Masaya ako. I'm very happy to be a producer. So for three years, parang nag ano ba? Nag freelance ako na photography on the side. Tapos nag nag nagpo photograph ako ng mga bagay-bagay na para sa akin lang. Pero yeah. habang nag freelance ako as a producer for a like a for a production company that specializes in documentary film. So dun ako nag start na parang uy. Okay pala to um I can be involved and para maliit lang yung team but you get to have a lot of responsibility and parang nakakakilala ka rin ng maraming tao so sabi ko ah okay okay pala to and then isang one time sinabi sa akin ng friend ko uy um 
kakauwi lang niya. Uh, si Pank Solajes, uh, filmmaker din siya. Tapos, isa siya dun sa mga unang generations of Doc Nomads. So, mm. Filipino siya. Tapos, uh, kakatapos lang ng program niya. So, umuwi na siya. Tapos, sabi niya, uy, mag-apply ka kasi parang masaya yung Doc Nomads. Um, gagawa kay mat- matututo kang gumawa ng documentaries. Tapos, bibigyan ka nila ng stipend if you have like a scholarship. Tapos, sabi ko, ah, uh, okay. But, I, I mean, like, interested ako pero takot pa rin talaga akong mag-direct ng kahit ano. Parang mm. masaya tal- comf- comfort zone ko talaga yung pagpo-produce at that time. Tapos nag-apply ako. Um, Tapos yun, natang- natanggap ako. Hindi ako makapaniwala. <laughs> Parang hindi ako makapaniwala. Tapos um, I think really dun sa Doc Nomads. Yung Doc Nomads kasi parang Erasmus Mundus course mm. siya. And um, Actually, at that time na nag-apply ako, nandun din si Alex Arumpak who okay. made a swam. Yeah. And um, so, the program takes you to Lisbon, Budapest, and Brussels. So, every semester, lilipat kayo. Tapos dun sa last semester, um, at that time, pwede kang pumili among the three. So, at that time, dun talaga ako, dun, I, re- I really think I gained the courage to hold the camera. Kasi dati, parang, ala, uh, shy. Tapos, um, Minsan-minsan lang. Parang hindi ko siya inoon, kumbaga. Kung si June nagmamanifest talaga siya, like he goes out there, writes, applies to things. Ako, hindi talaga. Parang, okay, sige. Reluctant talaga ako. Pero nung natanggap ako sa Doc Nomad, sabi ko, hala, hindi, ka, hindi na pwede na parang shy-shy. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng, naisip ko, hindi naman lahat ng tao merong chance. Mm. So, binigay ko talaga lahat nung nag-apply ako. And nung nandun na rin ako, parang gin, ginive, ginive all ko talaga. Yeah. And I felt that I really learned there. Siguro dahil at the time ready na din ako. Parang pagod na akong, pagod na akong matakot, kumbaga. Yeah, yeah. So, yun. Nasagot ko ba yung question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> siguro, um, when you applied, uh, syempre, graduate ka ng UP Film, mm-hmm. did you have to show them uh, sample work, portfolio? <laughs> oh, oh, like, um, you had to actually, apart from, like, a short CD, and, like, mm. wala, wala, hindi pa malaki yung portfolio ko nun. Puro photographs pa lang yung pinadala ko sa kanila. And then you have to make a three-minute video mm. that, um, that shows your world. Parang, ang title niya dapat, My World, and it shows your world. Tapos, naalala ko, nung time na yun, wala rin akong panahon mag-shoot. Tapos yeah. nung application period, na-delete lahat ng laman ng hard drive ko. Kasi nagkamali ako na, <laughs> nagkamali ako ng, <laughs> <laughs> nagkamali ako ng formatting. Parang, anyway, na wala lahat. And I had like, 32 gig, na parang, of travel, for travel videos, na parang mga clips lang. Yeah. And, and I made something about light. And, parang, how we react to light, how our existence is connected to light. Parang ganun. And talagang, I, I remember in that moment na ginawa ko siya, sabi ko, okay lang, um, I'm gonna show myself in this video. So, yun. And I think it worked. I think, parang yun yung first time na narealize ko na, ah, if I really show up, maybe people will will find mm-hmm. something meaningful in it. So para ako, ah, Okay, para yun yung isa yung sa mga unang beses na na-realize ko na that something personal can connect to others pala. So yes, yun. Yes. Um, balikan ko si June. Ah, uh, kanina 'di ba nabanggit mo yung yung parang na pigeon hole ka doon sa parang high art na na, na drama films. Mm-hmm. Um, paano paano anong mga nangyari uh, that led you to direct your first movie? Uh, ano anong paano paano anong mga ano nun, kaganapan na may 20 yan um i was so insecure na hindi ako nakapag film school uh, hindi ako nakapag i wanted to direct mm. talagang dream ko yon um pero insecure ako but yung mga movies na ginawa ni direct Mary Lou lagi ako nasa set so i was really mm. learning a lot from from her but you know i didn't feel it was enough kasi sabi mm. ko kailangan ko mag-aral Um, and then for some reason wala yung time na free ako kasi nung time na yan nasa GMA 7 ako nun eh uh, mm-hmm. medyo malaki yung 
requirement yung responsibility ko sa trabaho, hindi ako makaalis. And then yung nagkaroon ako ng window na pwede akong mag-aaral, wala, walang available dito. Uh, meron abroad sa Melbourne, sa University of Melbourne. Yung time na yun, yun yung exacto, University of Melbourne meron. I think it was for just two months lang naman. Mm. But it was expensive, I didn't have the money. Ano talaga, hindi ko alam, pero kailangan, sabi ko, kailangan makapag-aaral ako. So, medyo kailala ko na nun si Mother Lady. <laughs> Bumabalik na naman ako kay Mother Lady, <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Kasi naka-work ko na siya sa isang project. And I wrote her this long, passionate letter. Basically, mm. namungutang. <laughs> At sinabi ko sa kanya, napungutangin mo na ako, mag-aaral ako abroad. I will do anything for you. Mali pala yung, mali yung pagkakasabi ko. I will do anything for you. Medyo, nag, medyo sinumpa ako yung sarili ko doon. But anyway, pinagutang niya ako. Binigyan na ako ng, ng pera. Uh, of course, kapalit nun kailangan kong pumiwa ng exclusive contract sa Regal. Yeah. Um, and then I went to to Melbourne to study. Only to realize sa so lahat ng tinuturo nila, alam ko na, kasi tinuro sa akin ni Direk Marilu. Sobra lang ako insecure na hindi ako dumaan sa klase. Yeah. Lahat. Ano, hindi na, nung yung towards yan, hindi na nga ako pumunti. Kasi naboboy na talaga ako. Kasi natutunan ko na to. So, 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 nangihinayang ako sa pera. Tapos so, kung ako may kontrata pa ako. So when I came back, ito na. <laughs> Mani, kailangan mong pagbayaran kung ano yung inutang mo, di ba? Yeah. As promised, kung ano yung commissioned work siya, kung ano yung kinemission sa akin, ginawa ko. So, yun yung first movie ko sa Regal was so funny. Pinapunta kami sa Boracay para mag-shoot ng isang beach movie sa gitna ng bagyo. <laughs> so, wala akong nakulang sa Boracay pa ng interiors. And then, wala. Hindi siya mukhang beach movie. Mukha siyang TV drama. So, pagbalik ko dito, naki- naiiyak ako na nakikiusap ako kay mother to give me an additional two days. Kasi wala akong exterior. Eh. So, nag-shoot pa ako sa Subic yata. So, yun yung first movie ko. Yun yung... That's a funny <laughs> story. <laughs> um, and then, um, sunod-sunod na yun, di ba? Or bumatang... Sunod-sunod na yun. Oo, sunod-sunod um, na yun. Tinapos ko yung kontrato ko sa Regal. I, uh, natapos yung kontrato ko sa Regal 2012. Mm. And on 2012, that was the time I decided I wanna tell stories on my own terms. I see. And that was the time na nag-apply ako sa Sinimalaya. Mm-hmm. And then, sinali ko yung Buakaw. Yeah. And I remember, si Direct Mel really wanted me to be part of, of uh, yung match, batch na yun ng, ng Sinimalaya. But he told me, sabi ni iba, pat ka raw namin bibigyan ng chance. Si Chun Nana yan, yung anong gagawin niya? Anong klasong pelikula yung gagawin niya? Sabi ko, Direct, bigyan niyo ako ng chance. <laughs> gusto ko lang ikwento kung yun yung kwento ko this time yeah. and then yung binigyan ako ng opportunity and yeah, I think dun, dun nagsimula yung finally I I got to tell kagaya nga ng kasabi kanina na Venice yung your personal stories kung ano yung personal sa'yo pag nilabas mo kung ano yung mas authentic sa'yo yeah. it will actually resonate with people you'll be surprised the personal becomes really universal to a lot of people and yun yung na 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 realize ko na experience ko when I started you know making my personal films. Right. Um, uh, isang pansin ko sa yon sa sa filmography mo Juno. Um, so of course is you started with 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 drama films, and then later on, um, you you came up with uh really funny, <laughs> funny. Uh, iba talaga yung yung parang approach no sa sa humor. Uh, kailan nagsimula yung conscious ka ba na, sa, na sinabi mo sa sarili mo uh, ano uh, magka-comedy ako kasi da- drama ako dati? Na-discover ko na lang yun eh. Na-discover ko siya. I think as, as filmmakers, we, you know, in a way, with every movie that uh, we do, we discover, you know, kung ano pa yung pwede nating mm. ibigay, kung ano pa yung talent na pwede nating maharness sa sarili natin. And slowly, I was realizing na parang parang nakakatawa ako. <laughs> parang kaya kong magsulat ng, ng comedy. And then I tried it. And then once I discovered it, parang there's no turning back. Yeah, <laughs> hindi, yeah. ko na, hindi ko na siya mawala sa storytelling ko. Right. At, at isa pang napansin ko, um, even in your drama films now, may ano na eh, parang may 
may uh, certain humor no kahit mm. kahit as a uh, film as bleak as barber's tales mm. uh, may mga funny uh, ano talaga scene so at tapos parang even in in latter films oh, sa big night of course mm. uh, ano mm-hmm. siya yeah, yeah. build as a comedy pero very heavy pa rin yung yung theme mm. so sa tingin mo ba yung ganung classing straddling between you know funny and and, and dramatic magiging ano mo na siya parang trademark na na Junla na film I think it's going to be part of my storytelling now. Mm. Um, especially especially the things that we're going through. Yeah, yeah. As as a country right now. I mean, you know, when I decided to make big nights, how do, how do I approach this? It's so it's so hopeless. Mm. Uh, this story, uh, wala akong makitang way out for the character and you no know, mm. the interviews I did, parang lahat sila parang parang magunaw na lang tayo parang yun na yung ano eh yun na yung attitude eh parang yeah. how, how how do i tell this story and you know lagi akong humor yung nagsi-save sa akin mm. as a filmmaker as a person with things that i the things that i'm even going through right now it's it's really humor that's that's helping me and i think um with you kung ano may mga projects sa gagawin ko it will always be there yung yung touches ng humor na yun. yeah Sige. Um, Venice, napanood mo? May trailer ka bang napanood ng Big Night? Oo. Kanina, ah, pinanood ko siya. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I, I got it. I got yeah. the humor. Um, how about, um, I, I wanted to play a trailer of Last Days at Sea. June, okay lang sa'yo? Para lang sure, may yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Ah, sige, sige. Uh, and then Venice, okay lang i-share natin. Uh, i-share ko lang yung screen ko. Sige. Um, before I ask you questions about the film. Up. Uh, I need to share my sound pala. Wait lang, ha? Share screen. Share sound. Alam mo ba na yung mga ganyang crab, kapag um, malaki na sila, iniiwan na nila yung shell nila na yan. Ah, talaga? Tapos siya naman, hahanap na siya ng iba pang shell. Yung malaki na. Ano yung mahirap ito? It's difficult. It's oh, difficult. Changing shell. <laughs> bang nanggap sa ulap? <laughs> Oo, nakakaabot sila. Ah, nakaabot? Oo, oh, gusto ko. Yung maglalaro, maglalaro sa... dyan. Sa ulap? Oo. Gusto ko. Oo, oh, yung bird. Anong nararamdaman mo ngayon na alis ka na? There, um... So that was um, the trailer for Last Days at Sea. Um, 
Venice, what what was the origin of this? Kasi alam ko, sinuto sa, uh, this was somewhere in Surigao, right? Uh, paano Surigao ka napunta? Da- Surigao da Norte. Paano ka napunta doon? Um, so, noong 2014, I was working with a production company called Ninja Dog Studios. And um, I was working as a photographer and second camera operator for them. And meron silang project. Um, actually, I also say this in the beginning of the film. Meron silang project um, to make a film about the village where Ray Boy lives. Um Uh, to talk about how they were able to build systems for them to like survive uh, storms. Kasi nasa, ano sila, nasa typhoon belt sila. Tapos, dahil sobrang isolated sila, um, yung mga taga-Kerihata, meron silang parang protocol. So kahit na nagkakaroon sila ng storm surge, wala silang mga casualties. And mm-hmm. an organization uh, went there a few years back para... Um, magkaroon ng capacity building, disaster risk reduction management workshops, gano'n. So, hinar kami nitong org na to to make a short video on them. At that time, nine years old pa lang si Ray Boy. So, doon ko siya unang na-meet noong 2014. Tapos, noong na-meet ko si Ray Boy, ewan ko parang, um, pa, ano, ano talaga siya eh? Parang feeling mo matanda na siya. Um, parang he's young. You sinabi ko, lagi ko sinasabi, Ray Boy felt like he was young and old at the same time. Kasi parang alam, ang dami niyang alam, ang dami niyang tanong tungkol sa amin, tungkol sa buhay namin sa Manila. Ang dami niyang kwento tungkol sa Karihata. And, um, naalala ko pa dati, may kinuwento sila sa amin na merong malaking-malaking isda doon sa Karihata. And never nilang hinuhuli yun. Kasi yung isdang yun, it belongs to the sea. Tas, pa, sobrang, I, I was moved by the idea of this legendary fish. Tas, so naisip, naisip ko lang siya, sabi ko, okay, sana one day makabalik ako, tas makagawa ko ng film. Pero a few months after I met Ray Boy, nakakuha ko ng scholarship to Europe. Tapos nagpunta na ako ng Europe. And but, at that time, walang signal doon, walang telephone line doon. Um, so no, nag, we really lost contact with each other. Tapos, after, after kong magstay sa Europe, nung umuwi na ako, bumalik ako sa Karihata. Kasi naisip ko, okay, um, hi, ano na ako, parang sabi ko, hindi na ako nahihiya. Parang I'm not shy anymore. Na, parang hindi na ako ashamed to hold the camera. Parang mm. na-let na, na go ko na yon yung fear. So, bumalik ako doon. Sabi ko, siguro ito na yung time gagawa ko ng parang short film na tungkol dito sa giant fish. But yun talaga iniisip ko para experimental siya tapos uh, kwentuhan lang. Tapos nung pagdating ko doon, ah, ito pa pala, yung uh, in Karihatag, they built a marine sanctuary. Uh, parang meron silang place doon sa tap, malapit sa kanila na pinoprotektahan nila meron silang mga uh, mga tanod doon na para hindi mag-fish yung mga tao doon for the fish to be able to grow and multiply. Mm. So, nung, at that time, alam ko na yun, noong 2014, tapos sabi ko, wow, parang, uh, I was really amazed kasi, ewan ko, sab, la, naalala ko sinabi nila sa amin na, kung pwede lang, kung gusto namin, pwede na namin ubusin yan lahat ngayon, sabi mm. nila. Pero paano naman yung mga anak namin, yung mga magiging apo namin. So, I was really moved by this forward thinking. Alam mo yun, na parang meron pang susunod sa atin, so huwag muna natin itong ubusin lahat. So sabi ko, okay, sige, one day, pag magaling na ako, babalik ako, tapos gagawa ko ng film dito sa Karihata. Kasi that was the only way I knew how, alam mo yun, parang to communicate what I felt. Yeah. Pero nung bumalik ako, so after three years, nine years old si Ray Boy, 12 years old na siya. Tapos naalala ko nung pagdating namin doon, wala si Ray Boy. Hmm. Tapos sabi, niya, sabi nila, ay, wala si Ray Boy kasi nag exam siya. Kasi lilipat na siya sa, uh, ano, like sa June, um, mag-high school na siya. Hindi, hindi na siya titira dito sa Karihata. Tapos sabi ko, hala, uh, like, I mean, I'm ha- ba- ba- parang syempre na-excite ako na, oh my God, alis na siya. Pero yeah. parang nalungkot din ako na, Um, na paglumipat na siya. Sino nang mag-iisip noon yung yung mga taong nakilala namin yung mga 
yung mga nanay, mga tatay, pag like wala nang magiging ganun. Parang yun yung naisip ko na hala pag lumipat na si Rainbow sa Sudan, magkakaroon na siya ng ibang concerns. Mm. So, yung idea ko of the giant fish na ano yung environmental short documentary na naisip ko, nag-evolve siya into something else. Para naisip ko um naisip ko talaga hindi na mauulit tong summer na to. Yung, mm. Parang nagkaroon ako ng feeling na hindi na siya mauulit-ulit. So, nung, nung bumalik si Rayboy, um, nandun pa rin kami nung unang visit. Nag-visit kami doon, April yun. Sabi, tinawagan nila si Rayboy, o Rayboy, pagtapos ka na sa exam mo, bumalik ka dito kasi nandito si Ate Venice mo. Tapos naalala pa rin niya kami, actually, lahat ng matatanda doon sa Karihatag, nakalimutan na, niya, na, nakalimutan na nila kami. <laughs> Pero si Rayboy, naalala niya kami. So, sabi niya, sige, uwi ako. So, umuwi siya, nagbangka siya, bumalik siya sa Karihatag. Mm-hmm. And then, yun, after nung election, may election kasi nun eh, nung 2018. Sabi nila, pagkatapos sa election, bum- bumalik ka dito. So, May noon, bumalik kami nung May, tapos for two weeks, wala, nag, nag-hangout lang kami, nag, nag-chikahan. So, actually at that time, hindi ko talaga alam kung ano mangyayari doon sa film. Kasi parang hindi rin siya yung naisip ko. But at the same time, parang marami rin mga surprises. Kasi si Rayboy, as, as himself, marami siyang tanong. Mm-hmm. Tapos yung mga tito, tita niya, marami silang kwento na gusto nilang mm-hmm. i-share. So, parang during the two, during the 14 days of filming, it was really an exercise of listening. And I, I, I was really glad na I was with the people I was with. A- ano lang kami? Lima lang? Kapat, parang apat lang kami. Apat lang kami noon. Apat lang kami na nandun. Pero parang... they assured me na parang just live in the moment. Bala na ako may pelikula or wala kasi ano naman to independent lang naman tayo so let's just let's just be here parang ano. Pero so, may funding na kayo noon Venice. Alam mo wala pa. Ah, wala. Ah, okay. wala. Wala. Right. Wala. So we started talaga na wala and then after namin mag-film kasi nung dun sa scholarship nag-ipon ako <laughs> meron ako na ipon tas yun yung parang Yun yung, yun yung ginawa namin seed money. Tapos, syempre, mm. mga kaibigan ko yung sumama sa akin to right. film. Yung isa kong classmate from Doc Nomads, siya yung nag, nag-record ng sound. Yung dati kong boss, si Mosh, siya yung second camera namin. Tapos, mm. yung, kakla- yung friend ko from college, siya yung nag-associate produce. So, right. parang, parang magkakaibigan lang talaga kami na nagpunta doon. And they were really just supporting this idea that I had. So yun, yun yung start. And, and when you when you pitched it, uh, alam mo na ba na magiging full length siya? Hindi. hindi. Nung unang beses, hindi talaga. Kasi um hindi tal- hindi hindi talaga. Parang kahit na sinabi ko na okay, I'm gonna be like i-own ko na tong paggawa ng documentary. Ano pa rin ako, apprehensive pa rin ako. I I and I also did not have the time to really see hmm. all the footage that we had filmed. So understand kung ano yung kung ano yung kaya namin gawin with it. Right. Yun. So kasi nung una namin siyang pinitch parang a few weeks after ay after namin mag-film, a few weeks after pinitch na namin siya. So at the time I didn't really understand how much was in there. So yun. That's nice. What we really what we appreciate about the film is its maturity. Um very patient yung yung pelikula. parang there's nothing you know flashy to 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 show it was really you know parang it respects the 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 time the pace of of rural life provincial life um syempre maganda syempre yung visual so <laughs> na appreciate talaga ng ng, ng numbers yun. um june while i i talked about sa puso ng dagat kanina i know it was uh, uh, set in a in a seaside uh, mm. uh community no uh, but you also grew up in the city pa- paano pa- paano ka nakakaisip ng ganong scenario as as uh, idyllic as the community in sa puso ng dagat ano lang taba talaga imagination or meron ka bang roots sa sa province yeah I, i i spent most of my childhood actually sa bicol i see and then yung grandparents ko meron silang place malapit sa dagat mm. uh, so lagi akong may nostalgia for provincial life 
Um, so parang lagi akong bumabalik sa mga stories na gano'n. Like That's even nice. with Barber's Tales. Yeah. Um, Ganyan yung, ano, yung setting. Yeah. Right. Um, na-mention ko kanina sa'yo, Juno, na yun nga, Pinoy Review has been around since 10 years ago. Hmm. Um, and we've been conducting polls. I think John has been part of, John Tawasi, who just came in, uh, has been part of that poll from the very start. And um, binalikan ko lang yung, yung films mo na, na nag-figure sa aming polls. No? So for example, of course, 2012, uh, it was in our top five. Uh, Waka was in our top five uh, for films and director. And then 2013, Barber's Tales. You were actually the top director that was in the poll for Barber's Tales. Um, same with 2015 in Anino sa Likod ng Buwan. You were the top director in the poll. Um, and then Die Beautiful was the number four film. Kalel 15 was the number four uh, film. And you're the number four director as well. So very, of course, uh, parang credentials wise, parang makikita natin na you're, you're really one of the um, parang ini, ini expect ng, ng moviegoers that if it's coming from you, it's it's a big event. It's of, of a film, kumbaga. Mm. Do you feel any pressure in in coming up in, in terms of topping what was your previous work? Hindi, kasi you know when I started out in the industry, and this was you know during the time I was doing a lot of films for Regal. Mm. Yun yung time na napaka-conscious ko na you know, gusto kong mag-box office, mm. uh, gusto kong mapansin bilang director, and hindi ako laging masaya sa kinakalabasan ng pelikula. Uh, you know, those were commissioned work, na parang feeling ko, hindi ko makuha yung boses ko, hindi ko mm-hmm. makilagay yung sarili ko kung nasan ako. Um, but, you know, in 2012, nung nagsimula talaga akong magkwento ng Buakaw, I remember Carla Mendoza asking me, how was the edit? Uh, kumusta like, are you happy? So I go, actually, I'm so happy. And I don't care kung anong reaction ng, ng audience. Hindi naman sa snub ka, di ba? Hindi naman sa yeah. wala kang pakailan. Pero finally, naramdaman mo na nakawento ko. Siguro ka, hindi naman 100% nagawa yung vision mo, di ba? Hindi mo naman laging makakuha mag- 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 yun. Like 70%? Mm-hmm. Masaya na yun eh. Kasi dati parang 10-20% yung nakukuha ko sa vision ko eh. Mm-hmm. At ito, ang, mas limited yung resources ko. Pero mas... Mas nahawakan ko kasi it's so personal to me. And I think, you know, when you're authentic, hmm. um, it's really about telling the truth. Eh. Um, kung ano yung magiging um, result nun, uh, box office wise or kung ano may tingin ng critics, bonus hmm. na lang talaga yun. Bonus na lang talaga yun. Uh, pero hindi na ako na-pressure doon. Um, mm. na, ang, ang pressure ko is ano yung next story na makakakuha, maka- mararamdaman ko pa kaya uli yung passion na yun. Right. Magiging excited pa kaya uli ako. Kasi mm. yung natatakot ako na pag, pagpatapos na isang film, medyo nadidepress na ako kasi oh my God, meron pa kayang dadating. Yeah. May madadating pa kayang kwento kasi hindi ako sure kung meron eh. Hindi mo naman alam talaga kung saan nanggagaling yung inspiration, di ba? So natatakot ka na pakawala na. So you just have to be grateful na nakagawa ka ng isang pelikula. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially yung nangyari yung pandemic. Mm-hmm. Grabe yung realization ko. Grabe yung opportunity to be able to tell stories and to have this circle of people na sinusuporta ang kat na niyawala yeah. sa iyo. Uh, so yun. Yung hindi, hindi na hindi na ako nagpapapressure sa ganun. Um, do you are you conscious about your your role as producer versus as a director? Kasi uh, in the in the first place, do you produce your own films ba? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Pag ganun, um kung producer hat ang nag-iisip, syempre kahit sinabi mo na wala ka nang pakialam sa box office, um mas gugustuhin mo pa rin, di ba? Na, mm, na kumita yeah, yung yeah, pelikula yeah, yeah, mo. Yeah, 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 yeah. But can you can you divide your your being a director na it's it's really, you're satisfying yourself as a filmmaker versus the producer na we have to sell these films? You know, when I make films like, for example, I mean, Sa Likod ng Buwan, or mm. even Big Night, I mean, I tell my co-producers, you know, people who actually fund the films na, you know, I'm going to be, you know, let's be realistic. I'll tell mm-hmm. you kung aling dapat talagang maging expectation natin dito yeah. sa, 
sa pelikula ng to. So, but I tell them the story and ang hope mo lang naman ay maging kasing passionate sila, maniwala sila dun sa sa project mo. At kung may bonus na mangyayari, okay. Like, kasi, like, with Die Beautiful, we didn't know that, you know, mm. it's going to be a box office hit. Yeah. When I presented it when, sa mga co-producers namin, <laughs> nakakatawa pa yan eh. Pwede pang hindi die? Walang die dun sa title? Kasi baka hindi siya kumita. Sige, die hard? Kumita naman ang die hard. Di <laughs> so, sige, pwede sige, die beautiful. And then, Weeks going into the Metro Manila Film Festival, they usually have a forecast. Yung mga chatter uh, owners, diba? Sasabihin na nila sa'yo. And nung time na yun, sinabi, sa, sinabi na sa amin, number eight kayo. Hindi kayo kikita, wag na kayong umasa oh. kasi it's, ano, bakala yung kwento. It, tapos it's, um, no, it's not vice ganda. Uh, nung time na yun, di ba? So, hindi yan. So, in-expect na namin, hindi. But, you know, we were surprised. Tuwa kami na kumita siya. Yeah. Uh, pero, hindi mo talaga kasi pwedeng, there are no guarantees, eh. Yeah. Even if you make a film, you think that this is good, I'm making this film for, for, for the masa, quote, mm. unquote, that feeling mo, again, there are no guarantees. So, you might as well do something you love. Right. Yeah. I have a question for Venice. Um, if you were, Uh, given money to produce or, or to, to direct a fiction film, what would it be about? Wow. Hala. <laughs> oh, I would have to think really long and hard. Because like, I think like I'm at the phase na mentioned ni June kanina. Yung pagpatapos na. I mean, ah, kasi kakata- I mean, for me, feeling ko kakatapos lang ng film ko, even if it has been a year. Hmm. Parang um, Like I I I I sometimes feel na hala no no patapos na and I think like up until like three four months ago sabi ko hala baka never na ako matouch by anything enough for me to want to give it a try again kasi hindi naman din siya madali mm-hmm. like lalo na with the kind like with this previous film dami nang sabi na ay hindi namin yung mapapadala mapapalabas like It's a really, it's very slow. Wala na mga artista, walang voiceover, ay, walang voiceover ni Leonardo DiCaprio, yung mga ganun. So parang it, it wasn't really easy to make. So parang naisip ko, hala, will I ever be moved by something again? Mm-hmm. So ngayon, wala pa ako maisip. Right. <laughs> Lalo na in terms of fiction. I think like there's a territory that I want to enter, which is... um. working with non-actors playing themselves. Mm, yeah. So, um, pero hindi, wala, I haven't met anyone. Pero parang I, I, I want to like explore this idea of co-create, co-creation. Yeah. Na parang, um, because I like, in Portugal, I met a director who actually like wrote a script with her friend who was mm. pregnant. And then, itong pregnant friend niya na to, siya yung siya yung siya yung parang star siya, ni parang siya yung star dun sa film and and it's based on their life but also it's kind of fictionalized so mm. I want to enter that territory if given the chance that's nice yeah um kay June naman baliktad if you're given funding to direct a documentary film what would it be about no ho um kasi hindi ako, hindi, I, alam ko hindi, hindi ko siya forte, hindi ako magaling kasi nag-start ako actually yung career ko. Uh, although most people think na nag-start ako sa GMA7, nag-start talaga ako sa ABS-CBN as segment producer, director, and writer for a docu-series. Para siyang probe na ABS-CBN noon. Papangit ang ginawa ko. <laughs> <laughs> hindi ako pang documentary para <laughs> ginagawa ko siya lagi ng kwento <laughs> masyado kong minamanipulate yung story hindi nanap ako siya ng conflict <laughs> nagugulat yung producer yung mga executive producer but so that is re-enactment <laughs> may re-enactment <laughs> binapali ko talaga siya hinahanap ko lagi siya ng structure eh di ba mm. dapat you know you should, again you sabi nga ni Venice, you need to, you have to learn how to listen. Yeah. And allow the subjects to tell their story, not you. Yeah. <laughs> Manipulate their story to suit your needs, di ba? And your purpose. Yeah. Hindi. Hindi. It's 
so, kanya-kanya talagang ano no sensibility you know, parang alam niyo yung strengths niyo and uh, you know you, you you develop those strengths yeah. that's that's nice um i have some general questions for for the both of you um which which directors uh, foreign or local do you look up to um venice muna um local it will be alex arumpa arumpa yeah Yeah, and foreign. Wow, um, I think, uh, like, see the the first film na parang na feel na feel ko na really connected was uh, the documentary called Katatsumori by Naomi Kawase. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's about her grandmother yeah. and yeah. parang playful yung approach dun sa camera. And then also there's this other another film director named uh, Sergei Dvortsevoy who made Bread Day and then who made In the Dark and Tulpan. And again, it's, oh okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I don't know. I I I I really look up to these people. And also there's another one Lithuanian, um, uh, like Jonas Mekas. Also, I I remember before I. I wrote to him. See, I wrote to Jonas Megas. Parang uh, inaaral namin siya sa school. Tapos, yeah. h- hindi ko alam kung buhay pa siya. So, nag- sinerge ko siya sa internet. Tapos, <laughs> nagsulat ako sa kanya. Like, nagsulat ako ng long email about like how inspired I am of his work. You know. Tapos, nag-reply siya. Wow. <laughs> nag-reply siya. Within like 10 minutes, nag-reply siya. So, parang, really? so sabi ko, like, I, 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 I appreciate this like, this idea that you can connect to yeah. someone who is like way older than you with more experience yeah. and yeah. you know and like some random Filipina student mm-hmm. writing to them but I was really moved by this so I really look up that's a nice story um John actually um, is some somewhat of a Japanese film expert uh, he, ah. he, he wrote in the chat box uh, the link to Katatsumori <laughs> nice. I think oh. check out <laughs> yeah si uh, naman uh, uh, directors you look up to Filipino definitely uh, Lino Baraka, Ishmael Bernal. I remember really being moved by by their films, especially uh, Lino's um, Oro Pronovis, mm. uh, Manila sa Koko ng Iwanag. Um, and then Hirokasa Koreda. I see. Nice. You know what? Sobrang, <laughs> sobrang, sobrang, I don't know, basta Hirokasa Koreda. Um, sino pa ba? I've I've not seen a lot of his films, but I think it's my favorite film. Because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Alan Rene, yeah, uh, yung um, Hiroshima Monomul. Yeah, uh, this, this I think yun yung isa sa pinaka gusto ko talaga ng pili kala. Um, yun. Nice, really nice. Um, I'm looking at other. Uh, questions here. Ah, last film that you saw that you really love. Venice. Ah, uh, wait, I have to re- um it's called the Memories of the of River Agano. Memories of River Agano by this Japanese director named Sato Makoto. Um, what is what's it about? Um it's uh so in River Agano para nagkaroon ng chemical Like a mining company dumped uh, like mercury in the river. Uh-huh. Tapos, um, so it's a sequel to another uh, film called Living by the River Agano. Yeah, Memories of Agano. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, so 10 years later, they, the film crew came back and visited the people who they met like years back. Pero in Memories of Agano, They, most of them were already gone. So I don't know. I was really moved by this, like making someone's present presence in a place, even if they're absent. And mm. parang their treatment of subtitles. Because parang at the beginning of the film, um, may meron letter from the translator saying na parang um the like the language in in this part of Japan is really difficult to understand. So parang instead of like 
um, parang really sticking to word per word. Parang they decided to do playful subtitling in the film to like show the spirit of what was happening in every scene. Nice. So parang I I I love this idea that the translator uh, actually has a voice in the film and like tells tells a message to the audience, like sends mm-hmm. a message to the audience. So I was really moved by this this film. Yeah. Uh, June, last film you saw that you loved. Niya ako sabihin kasi ibig sabihin pinanood ko siya nang hindi ma na hindi legal. <laughs> That's fine. I really wanted to watch it so naganap ako. Yeah. So finally napanood ko siya I think two nights ago yung Real Fortune and Fantasy. Oh I really yeah. Wa- I really wanted to yeah. I really wanted to see it. So me <laughs> so too. Pinanood ko. Niya ako sabihin kasi yung mga kasama ko sa SFFR nominated siya as one of the five best films. <laughs> Hindi ko napanood. <laughs> But I really Drive My Car, I saw it. Uh, yeah, yeah, maganda, nagustuhan mo. Uh-huh. Actually, I like, well, I prefer it over ano, yung Drive My Car. I mean, I mean, I think universally, yung parang lahat Drive My Car. Yeah. Uh, mas, siguro mas nag-resonate sa akin yung stories. Mm. That's nice. Um, sige. Um, may questions actually from other members who were, were not here, no? but they, they, sent this uh, these questions uh, earlier for Venice may nagtanong um tungkol sa sitwasyon ng karihatan tama ba yung lugar karihatag karihatag hmm. uh, kasi nadaanan yata siya ng bagyo Nad- nadaanan sila and oh, up to na? now wala pa rin silang kuryente hmm. and um for a while wala rin silang signal so parang mahirap maka-reach nang makahan maka para maka, makibalita kasi um uh, it they, it was hard to communicate with them and i think mm. like up to now they still need supplies yeah yeah so like among us we nagkakalab kami ng mga funds like to send mm. over goods like among friends and right. people who are close to like our families mm. we send over pero parang yun yung pinakamahirap kasi wala yeah. pa rin silang kuryente and that mm-hmm. makes like communication difficult but mm-hmm. the good thing is i think um organized din yung malimuno mm-hmm. um ang mahirap lang kasi yung karihatag wala silang road so i, I think mas matagal yung pag transfer ng materials so they were really um hit also yeah. but again the good thing was zero casualty sila kasi mm-hmm. they were always prepared yeah. so Yeah. Are you still in touch with Ray Boy? Mm-mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, pag alba pag papalabas yung film somewhere, I I send him a photo or parang I send him updates. So parang yung last na nag-usap kami parang a few days ago. Mm. High school na ba siya or Oh, high school na siya. So right now, 2018 yon nung film siya. So ngayon 16 na siya. Magsi-17 wow. na siya this year. Binata. <laughs> Binata na siya. <laughs> Binata na siya. Yeah. Nice. Um for June, may may nakapansin sa mga pelikula mo. Um madalas daw may mini make up at patay sa films like Die Beautiful, Buakaw at Big Night. May fascination ka ba sa death? at bakit associated siya sa makeup? <laughs> Very funny question. <laughs> hindi ko alam. Hindi ko, I don't know how to answer that. Yung makeup, hindi ko hindi ko alam na. Hindi ko alam kung bakit ko siya nababalikan. Siguro it's I, I have um it's about masks, the mask mm. what mask wearing. And you know as as gay people, you know, and you know, even straight people, we have these masks that we wear. And dun sa milieu ko naman na mga bading, transgenders or yeah. ano man Uh, part siya, part siya ng, ng ritual. Yeah. So, I mean, it has to be there for me as far as I'm concerned. Yung yeah. death naman, sinabi rin yan sa akin ng ano eh, sinabi rin yan sa akin ng uh, regent dati ng UST. Bakit nawa ko masyado? <laughs> May ano eh, UST Literary Award before. I see. Um, And you know, bibigay nila dun sa deserving na UST student na you know may counting literary uh, body of work. So mm-hmm. I I think I got it the first year, and then the second year I was supposed to get it, and then in announce ah in announce to na uh, you're not getting this. This is supposed to be yours. You're not getting this. Kasi masyado kang 
yung yung movies uh, yung mga place mo place pa the time laging may namamatay <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> problema doon kung may, kung may namamatay eh. Yung storytelling ko eh. So ay kasi kaya ka pinutuloy yung tradition ng may namamatay kasi gusto kong mapanood niya. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, for Venice, um, also for June, if you, if you would like to answer this. No? In the last few years, more and more documentaries have been sent by countries as their entries for best international film of the Oscars. Just this year, the film Flea was nominated for Best International Feature, Best Documentary, Best Animated Feature. Is this something that you can also see the Philippines doing? We have never sent a documentary feature. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. I think like more and more, at least in my circle, more and more people are getting interested in making documentaries. Mm. And I also think that There are many things to be said and there are many stories that are waiting to be heard. And I really hope that but, um, we also pay attention because, um, yeah, I think that it's important also to kind of give space right. for the other stories that may be out there. Alam mo yun, na parang yeah. We're just not paying attention to. But I really hope, I, I really hope so. I hope that actually more than like going to the Oscars, also just supporting and making sure that even beginning a documentary is possible. I think yeah. yun yung parang pinaka hope ko na parang sana there is like more support for yeah. other people like to make their own films. Like uh, no, ha? parang systematic support. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if I may just add to that, no. Um, of course, in 2016, when Sunday Duty Queen won the top award in Metro Manila Film Fest, um, and then Aswang did really well with the critics uh, in the in the country. Um, parang parang it's time, no? Na parang ang 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 pwedeng isipin ng public na documentary can can screen alongside uh, fiction films and and be seen. Uh, by by many um sa sa amin sa SFFR um of course we have a category best documentary but this year actually we started um giving out awards to documentary shorts so meron kaming set, set of nominees for short documentaries nakakatuwa yung reaction ng mga nominate even the shortlisted films na na ano uh, parang sobrang masaya sila na na, na nare-recognize yung gawa nila na parang ignored kasi di ba parang mm-hmm. yeah. short film na nga yeah. documentary pa parang yeah. halos walang mm-hmm. manonood so gusto yeah. namin ipagpatuloy yon na ano yung rec- ganung passing recognition siguro kay June kasi alam ko 2012 uh, Buaka was uh, submitted to the Oscars mm-hmm. pumunta ka ba noon sa sa states to ano to to do publicity nag nagkataon na Um, natanggap yung buwa ko nun sa New York Film Festival. Mm. Um, so I think it, that started the campaign. Um, it was really well received in New York at the time and then there was somebody from the New York, the New York Times that attended the screening and mm. interviewed me. So na, parang nandun ako nung time mm. ng, ng campaign. And That's then nice. our producer decided to get a uh, PR um, agency there uh, mm. sa US. Sobrang mahal pala. Yeah. So it's, it's so expensive. So expensive na parang at one point parang hindi na namin kayang isustain. Yeah. Sobrang mahal eh. So we decided na so sinubok mm-hmm. hanggang kaya but it was just so expensive. We really need the help of you know yeah. the, you know, we need the help of, of our government if we really want to push our films. Yeah. Well, actually nga bago nga tayo pumunta sa Oscar sana man lang dito sa sa industry natin di ba? Yeah. I'm not sure kung nag-iba na ngayon ha yung yung prom- promotional uh process ano procedures. Um I'm sure it has may may pera pa rin involved. Pero na surprise ako this year may pumasok na nominated film from Bhutan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 'Di ba? <laughs> Very small quiet film and, yeah. and suddenly it it was nominated. So I'm not yeah. sure kung maganda ba yung ano nila publicity or hindi na, parang mas na lesson na yung ganong klasing uh, process sa pagpili ng 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 nominated films 
but uh, we'll see. Sad lang, di ba, this year walang, walang submission ng Oscars uh, Philippines kasi nakalimutan daw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so typical. But, um, sige. Uh, there's another question um, for, for June. Um, kasi very successful yung Game Boys. No? Um, mm-hmm. Of course, hindi siya pelikula. It didn't start out as a, as a film. Um, anong, anong take mo dito? Alam ko, it was, nauna ba tong uh, Game Boys kesa sa ibang mga BL series na I think the una kami by a few days. By a few days, Kasi wow. By, by that time, sunod-sunod for some reason. Yeah, sunod, sunod, yeah. Eh. Oh. Oh, nauna kami by a few days lang. Right. Um, so, um, nagsim- al- ang, ang alam ko ang origin nito is somewhere Southeast Asia, Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, conscious ka ba sa ganong klaseng uh, phenomenon uh, outside the Philippines na may ganong fandom yung mga young young uh, women young young high school or college girls na fanatic sa mga boys love series at at gusto yun ba yung nag-ujok sa yun na gawin siya sa Pilipinas no actually nag-start lang yan kasi we were in the middle of a pandemic you know nagsisimula pa yung pandemic mm. and parang we i wanted to do something kasi nakakulong lahat and yeah. you know we had this uh, weekly meetings and I could sense that everybody was really down. Uh, kasi wala eh, walang pwedeng gawin and we wanted to provide ano, job opportunities for you know, for our staff, for our talents. Mm. So, and we decided na ako na why don't we do, uh, we don't, why don't we do a, a show for, for YouTube using a screen light format, meaning computer, computer format, two characters just talking mm-hmm. to each other and, you know, we have to really um good actor si Elijah and si Kokoy. So sabi ko let's let's buhan natin buuhin natin sa ganung kwento. So sabi ko interesting siguro kung gawin natin ano LGBTQ mm. uh, yung, yung 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 story and ang nagdagdag na lang noon talaga yung, yung director si Ivan Payawar and si Ash. Sila actually yung nag-educate sa akin tungkol sa BL. Ah, okay, may ganyan pala. <laughs> okay. O, oh, sige, gawin natin. Yun. And then, yun lang eh. We, we just really wanted to do something during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so, ganun din, ganun din ba? Hindi mo na na foresee yung magiging success ng palabas na? Ay, wala. Wala talaga. Walang, I didn't know na biglang, hindi ko alam magiging industry siya for a time, di ba? Yeah. Parang for a year ang daming ganglabasang BL. Hindi ko alam. I mean, we were just doing it para lang magkaroon ng trabaho. In fact, when Netflix decided to pick up uh, yung season 1 ng Game Boys, we had to reshoot the uh, first episode. Kasi yung first episode, we were just learning eh. And then nung nilagay namin yun sa YouTube namin, YouTube channel namin, ah, kasi siya namin, iniisip namin, baka walang manood dito. <laughs> <laughs> baka walang manood dito and then pag nakita mo yung yung pilot talagang <laughs> lapot-lapot yung mga artista you know? kasi ito, we were learning I mean the, 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 they were the actors were shooting themselves sila nag, nag, naglalagay ng ilaw yeah yeah, yeah. And so we had to reshoot it like five times kaming nag-reshoot eh ng 10 minutes lang yun ha <laughs> 10 minutes lang yung first episode and then yeah, yeah. naging 8 naging umabot ng 13 episodes na minsan nagiging 40 minutes na yata yung pinakamahaba natin That's nice. Um, may question lang ako sa sa uh, process ng casting. No? Kasi syempre, hindi, hinga, hindi mo siya na, naisip na maging ganito kalaki. But in um, in considering, not just siguro for, for Game Boys, no? but for casting actors for your films with gay characters, ginagawa mo bang consideration yung sexuality ng actor or mas tinitingnan mo yung capacity ng actor? With, for example, uh, Sigura, uh, Die Beautiful. Yeah. Um, before Paolo, I tried to audition. I really mm. tried to audition uh, to look for uh, transgenders at that time nung kung sino yung pwedeng nakaka-arte. Pero hindi ko makuha yung, yung gusto ko kasi may comic timing siya na hinihingi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, in, you know, hindi, hindi mo pwedeng i-workshop yung comic timing. I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 it has to be authentic. It has to come naturally. 
So yeah. eventually wala talaga. So I, I I want it follow. So lagi naman lagi kong kino-consider 'yon. Kino-consider okay. ko lagi yung representation. Mm. Um but in the end for me it's really about character. Uh I mean it's about telling stories eh, and, and mm. how 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 to how to um help the story move along by having a really good actor, diba? Yeah. So about, yeah. May konti lang saliwa dun sa acting. Bihiwalay na agad eh. Masasira yeah. na agad yung storytelling. Yeah. I, I, I understand, no? Um, although, syempre, um, a pwedeng counter-argument nun is um, maybe uh, there needs to be a, ano, parang a serious, um, parang industry-wide na effort to, I don't know, to hone the talents of, you know, Uh, non-heterosexual actors because mm-hmm. they're there maybe they just yeah. lack that that you know that extra training extra workshop to be as yeah. good as yeah. the yeah. the actors given these roles no mm-hmm. um pero yun nga um, hindi lang sa naman sa Pilipinas na issue to eh. everywhere mm-hmm. yeah, pinag-uusapan yeah. din yung representation um we've almost come to to the end of the of the uh, round table no but I, i want to open the floor to my colleagues here uh, john bernard vinson do you have questions for our guests i'll start muna no um siguro um for for venice Um, anong anong mabibigay mong advice for upcoming documentarists na na nga, gustong maggumawa ng uh, documentaries pero nahihirapan anong pwede mong mabigay na pay ah wait <laughs> sipin ko <laughs> um i think yung pinaka like nakatulong sa akin um was an advice that was given to me by, by by my producer actually parang i think it was a really tough time during the filmmaking process parang uh, we couldn't get funds uh, we also weren't sure kung how how we were going to do the distribution kasi we were a very young company as in wala pa kaming one year no? so sabi niya sa akin and i felt really uh, pressured na parang to live up to a certain standard mm-hmm. na parang okay dapat ganito o dapat ganyan dapat ganun and then parang uh, my producer she lives in Taiwan so uh, apat kami na co-producers but this uh, like Fan Fan Wu is like one of the producers and she called me up and she said then is okay sabi niya um, you know what's important she said it doesn't matter kung yung like if if the film we're going to make will be liked by many people if it will go to many places sabi niya what's important is that you make a film that is true to the experience that you had this para i felt relieved kasi mm-hmm. naisip ko then if i'm not like you know if i'm not living up to whatever standard that is out there I can just use what I have and and what I have might be not enough but it can also be enough. I can play with the form. I can you know I I I I can look at my material more intently and maybe something good will come out of it. So I think that's my advice. Na parang you know if just try first try. Mm. And And just try to make the film that is true to your own experience. Right. You know? That's a that's a really nice uh, advice. Um, June, alam ko may mga nabigay ka ng advice sa uh, sa mga previous interviews mo na no, sa upcoming filmmakers. Uh, kasi nga dami ng opportunities regarding film festivals. But um, considering these times now, na yung pandemic. Um, anong mga realizations mo as a filmmaker na gusto mong i- i- ipasa sa mga upcoming uh, young filmmakers natin? Uh, it's it's a gift. It's it really is a gift to be able to to given the to be given this opportunity to tell stories. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, like dito sa bagong batch ng Cinemalaya finalists kasi yung Cinemalaya part of the selection committee and mm-hmm. 
this year we decided to you know uh instead of you know the usual um selection of you know uh, entries we decided to have a film lab mm, yeah. i think during the discussion the one thing that i told them is, is you know this is not the time to be safe because of everything that's happening around us, because we don't know if you get another chance to make a film. This is really not the time to be safe. I mean, you, you need to tell a story that only you can tell. And it really has to come from a, a really truthful place. You're not telling this story because you think this is the kind of uh, film that's going to turn you into a rock star or mm -hmm. the kind of film that will go to now film festivals and win awards that is you know that the the union dapat na motivation mo eh mm. you really gusto mong magkwento kasi parang parang pag hindi mo na kwento to mm. ano yung buhay mo parang anong purpose ko parang kulang right. na lang gusto ko sabihin it feels like you're going to die if you know you don't get to tell the story mm. parang dapat ganun yung 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 yung, yung weight sa iyo ng ng pagkikwento uh, so you don't, you don't really know kung lang yeah. may opportunity you know, with that and you know with this pandemic you know yung, yung, yung idea of control it, we all mm. it's, it's it's an illusion yeah and we don't really have control there are no guarantees so you know when you're given this opportunity to make a film make it count kasi sayang talaga sayang that's another wonderful piece of advice um last question from me uh, unless may may pahabol yung police ko um, what's what's next for you? Alam ko, uh, Venice, you're still working with with Fan Wu. Um, hindi pa tapos yung film niya, right? Hindi pa. Hindi pa. So you're you're working with her, but other other than that, may may iba ka pang in the pipeline. I'm beginning to do research for the next film, but it's very fragile, so I cannot tell yet. No but right now, I'm really focusing on Fan, like helping Fan finish her film as. We've been we've had a long-standing collaboration, and I felt that this time it's my turn to like help her, you know, reach the finish line. I, I feel like I really owe her that. And I think like since we grew up together in, in filmmaking, but I really want to help her finish her project. So yeah, right now we're in the editing phase, like we're entering the editing phase, and we're part of this uh Yamagata documentary dojo. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's for the entire month of February. We're just doing it online. Kaya dapat, dapat nandun kami sa Yamagata, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so right now, as in at the present moment, that's the thing that I'm really focused on. And and you plan to release the film this year? Um, either, no, at 2023. 2023. Yeah. Okay. Good luck with, with that project, Venice. Thank you. Um, and June, what's what's next for you? I know you're in Baguio producing a new movie. Uh, can you tell us something about it? Uh, no, I just, uh, no, I uh, came from Bataan. Doon kami nag-shoot nung film. I see. Uh, it's a romantic comedy me, uh, directed by Ivan Payawal. I see. Uh, so I'm producing that. Uh, pero ako personally, right, parang wala akong gusto ko kami masyado <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> may mga may may projects sa parang hindi kasi you know with film hindi mo alam kung matutuloy o hindi until you're shooting it eh minsan yeah. kasi shoot mo na baka hindi pa matuloy so hindi ko alam kung may mga sinimulan but I'm not really sure kung ano yung matutuloy yet now I'm really ano sinusubukan ko magsulat ng novela <laughs> yung oh, wow. <laughs> will that be your first bite ever yes so excited wow. <laughs> Wow, that's well, exciting. Five, five years, siguro. That's, that's still something to look forward to. Yeah, so uh, I, I really had fun talking to you guys. Thanks so much for um, you. sharing your time with us this weekend uh, evening. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, as, as, um, as uh, mentioned earlier, our hope is for this to be seen by people and for them to appreciate, you know, uh, what, what goes on behind, behind films. Um, and again, congratulations for, for being nominated in SFFR for several categories. Um, and we wish you all the best in, in your future projects. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs>